And Toby, over to you. Thank you very much, Carl. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the Voices of Change coffee session, our Voices of Change growth sessions, our Voices of Change leadership sessions, where we all get to find out what it takes to actually grow and be the phenomenal corporate leader that you want to be. Where we all get to learn from others. Where we also get to understand what makes leaders capable of walking the tough journey and still thriving at the end of the day. Where we all get to understand the art of the possible. Where we all get to dream. Where we all get to know that we too can get there. Absolutely, we too can get there. I'm very proud this morning to welcome our guest speaker, Nkosi Nati Mushwana. I must tell you, I've been given his profile, I've read through it, and ordinarily I would summarize it so that we just get to the gist and start hearing the pearls of wisdom that he will share with us. But his bio is written so beautifully. I'd like to share it with you because it absolutely tells a story. So Nkosi Nati Aaron Mushwana was born on 25 July 1990 in Gakhiso, a small township in Western Johannesburg. Given his persistent pursuit of his dreams, Nkosi Nati is no stranger to leadership roles and working hard to achieve his goals. He matriculated at Midrand High School with four distinctions and was a member of the Executive Learner Council. After a successful tenure at TLC Marketing Worldwide, one of the leading global promotions and loyalty agencies, he joined Prime Stars. And this is where the magic continues to happen. In 2015, he joined Prime Stars as a project assistant. Within 18 months, he was promoted to a senior management position. As of 2022, he is the youngest of chief operations in the history of Prime Stars and leads a team that delivers high impact youth development initiatives to over 90,000. Yes, I said to over 90,000 underprivileged secondary school learners. Under his leadership, Prime Stars celebrated the cumulative milestone of reaching 1 million beneficiaries in 2019. I know, of course, it seems strange when you hear stories like this about yourself, but I'm talking about you here. Kosinati has experience in diverse roles, such as strategy, marketing research, new business development, innovation, and national program design and management. He attributes his success to the continuous learning and always going an extra mile in all of his roles. His passion for youth stems from his belief that it is time to reinvent the South African dream and brand it anew by equipping young people to take ownership of their destinies. He is motivated by his family, success, happiness, and purpose. His innate belief is that we are all put on this earth for a reason, to dominate and impact the world positively. His career highlights include winning the SAP Kickstart Social Entrepreneurs Competition in 2010, successfully negotiating a multi-million rand sponsorship for his youth development programs, representing prime stars in the National Development Plan Youth Ambassadors Program and being featured in various publications to share his story as well as his dreams. More recently, in 2008, he was recognized by News24 as Nash and Nashvers as one of the 100 young Mandelas as part of the Mandela Centenary com com Commemoration. As a testament to his organization's work in education, in 2019, the Math and Science Program was recognized by the American Chamber 
of Commerce as one of the leading programs on the continent. Ukoti also serves as a board member of Youth Star Foundation alongside Mr. Sipo Nkosi and a mentor, a boy child founder by Mr. Sidney Bellin. Kosi, we want to thank you for accepting our invitation. We want to say we are eager to hear your story. Your passion comes through for young people, even in reading your bio. And if you actually feel you don't know who the person I was introducing as I was reading your bio, then I ask you to please copy and catch up and be as close as possible to this phenomenal person that we have introduced. Over to you and thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Um, as you say, very weird hearing someone talking about you. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's very easy for me to talk about others. Uh, I enjoy that, but quite weird to hear. But uh, very nice to talk to you, see you, Dombi. I appreciate the intro. And uh, it's lovely to be introduced by someone you've looked up to uh, for so many years. And I guess, you know, the universe has its time. So I appreciate that very much. <laughs> and of course, thank you to uh, Colleen, the, the genius, the, the innovator, the daredevil, the change maker. I uh, really appreciate the platform and, and, and trusting me uh, uh, and inviting me rather, to come in and share my story. And of course, good morning to uh, everyone who's joined us uh, virtually this morning. I really appreciate the platform and I look forward to engaging. So I'll jump right into I'll jump right into it, and I, I'd like to have some engagement. So what I'll do is I'll talk a little bit about myself, very little, um, and I'll share more about our work that we do, um, the purpose of our work, and most importantly, uh, this that you see behind me. Uh, this is a bold statement that says uh, we're raising a nation of good men. So as Ndomi said, uh, Ngosnati Moshwana is my name. I am. Uh, 32 years old, 32 for another month, uh, 25th of July, I turned 33, I'm a Leo, and um, it's, uh, it's been exciting being in this space. When Colleen uh, spoke to me and said, you know, she's got this Voice of Change movement, I've been following her for some time, um, and, and I do, I work with a gentleman named... Uh, morning. Which I'm sure, good morning, which I'm sure... A lot of you on this call and a lot of people in the space in the country, whether it be CSI training or strategic marketing, course related marketing, would know him. And uh, he introduced me to Colleen a number of years ago, and I followed on, uh, uh, you know, Colleen's amazing journey with the GMAs and others. And I also had the opportunity a few years ago to uh, be a youth judge on one of the categories. And what's been inspiring for me, and that's really guided me on my own journey with what Colleen is doing, is just the power and strength of having one key message, one key drive, and a very clear objective of wanting to make an impact. As a uh, social impact advocate myself, it becomes easy to be drawn in various directions. And I'm sure a lot of people on the call are patriotic South Africans, are, uh, you know, active citizens who in one way, shape or form look outside the window and can imagine a plethora of challenges that South Africans face. And the very first thing we want to do is solve each and every one of these challenges. But what I've really learned from Business Engage um, and Colleen is the power of focusing on a challenge. And what my challenge and purpose is, is focusing on young people and supporting young people in our country coming from various backgrounds by that so because i found that in my own journey um, growing up in a township community the difference for me and the difference maker has been access to information access to quality education and of course having access to a network of people who supported me through this journey so what got me to this point and i'll unpack the work that we do with prime stars is the fact that one day I was sitting talking to a few colleagues and we got to the realization that if, they, if we meet in Tombi in grade eight in a St. Stithians, for example, and we meet an Ndombi who goes to a Pumalong High in Tembisa, for example, both Ndombis have 
the same capacity, ability, potential to be able to become very successful change makers in the world in whatever shape or form. But the difference between the two is the access to information, access to education, access to support network and resources. So what my purpose I'd like to believe in life is, is really to be an advocate that provides access to these resources, the support structures, so that we can have every Ntombi in the country, regardless of race, creed, background, and where they come from, to have equal opportunity. And through that equal opportunity, I fundamentally believe um, that we'll be able to make a bigger impact in redefining the South African dream. I am quite committed to the South African dream, and why I speak about redefining it is that the South Africa we envisioned when the, the, the notion of the Rainbow Nation was created is not the South Africa we are at today. But whenever I go out and speak to my peers and young people at schools that I work in, the key is to not lose hope. And in not losing hope, the key is for all of us to understand and believe that everything that we do and every day, we have a contribution to make to ensure that we still reach that objective of the Rainbow Nation. So the work that we do in educating young people every day is fundamentally focused on creating active citizens, in teaching critical and scarce skills, and in ensuring we can raise a generation of young people that can indeed redefine, reimagine, and rediscover the South African dream. I work for an organization called Prime Stars. We have been in operation for 19 years. Next year will be 20 years. Um, and we'll be sending invitations uh, to, to various stakeholders to come and celebrate this 20-year milestone with us. In this 20 years, we have seen South Africa's socioeconomic status change, but also we've seen public and private sector uh, uh, sectors also change their way of investing and being active citizens in the country. We started off with a project called Take Your Girl Child to Work Day with Cell C all those years ago. And at the time, the objective was to create a cause-related marketing initiative that could do two things. It could respond to a challenge at the time, which was um, the objective of getting young girls into the boardroom, into workspaces, particularly those that were traditionally male-dominated. And secondly, in the process of, of creating this national cause, favorably positioned South Sea as a brand. What then happened is for 18 years, Salsi dominated when it, come, when it came to uh, the, the, the development and support of young girls, and they particularly invested, whether it be their CSI or marketing spend in this initiative. But that was the early birth of what became uh, Prime Stars today. What we do is we are not a CSI beneficiary um, or a typical organization that comes to organizations like yours in the private sector with a good cause looking for resources. We've evolved into what we call a social impact partner. So over this period, we've, we've gotten the sweet spot positioning where we partner both with government and the public sector, as well as with business and the private sector to collaborate with uh, industry to collaborate with civil society and communities in responding to the challenges of the day, but more specifically, supporting young people to be upskilled and be in a position to be able to respond to and be competitive in the challenges of tomorrow. What that means, quite simply, is that we've got strategic collaborations with the departments of basic education, higher education, small business development, social development, environment, finance, and more recently, even presidency. And our work with them is fundamentally focused on them identifying and sharing with us what the key priorities are in socioeconomic development in the country, particularly within the context of a young person in South Africa. Why young people are important? in our country fundamentally one is that africa when you look at the trajectory over the next few years by 2030 i believe it is will have the highest concentration of young people on the planet which then really means that we'll have the youngest continent 
on the planet. That means that young people are an asset and not a liability. And we work with government to see how do we then mobilize this major asset we've got in the country, particularly within the context of a high youth unemployment crisis, of a high unemployed graduate crisis, of a high needs crisis, so young people who are not in employment, not in training, and not in education. And of course, uh, having a, a low skills base when considering what industry and business needs. On the other hand, it's also about looking at the fact that South Africa generates more job seekers than it generates job creators. And how can we then leverage this asset of young people through mutual collaboration to create entrepreneurs who can create the solutions to the problems we face as a country and through that process and through the profits made create jobs. So from a government perspective, they see us as a social impact partner in addressing some of these uh, top priorities when it comes to young people. From a private sector perspective, we then come in as a uh, triple BE partner. When you think about socioeconomic development, when you think about enterprise development, and more recently, skills development, which I will unpack. But the point is not Ngosnati and his team coming into a brand and saying, we've got all the solutions, we need your money. Now, let me not uh, mislead you. We fundamentally need resources, and we fundamentally need your funding into our programs for us to collaborate in making a tangible difference. But the key differentiator for us is that if we speak to a Ndombi at a Vodacom, for example, there are strategic objectives, internal objectives, and business imperatives that Vodacom as a brand has and wants to achieve. And there's a certain, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, let's call it profile of activities and active corporate citizen that a brand wants to achieve. So in us coming in, it's about having a conversation about the direction you're wanting to go into, a conversation about the role young people play within your ecosystem, a conversation around what skills pipeline is required in your space for the future, and also a conversation around what your strategic objective is. And what we saw from Take Your Girl Child, which evolved into our different programs, is that having that engagement, having that strategic partnership helps us then align the national social impact imperative to businesses' social impact imperative. And as a social impact partner, we then become a platform, a facilitator, and a partner to both the private and the public sector to respond to the challenges we see out there. So how have we done it? 13, 14, 19, about 18 years ago, Memo uh, Cheha attended one of our education sessions. Our biggest differentiator has been the fact that we have taught in cinemas across the country. So we leverage a medium that engages young people, that is relevant to young people, and that connects to them. And when I speak of young people, I speak of age groups 14 to 20 years old across all nine provinces in the country. And as mentioned in the intro, we're working with 90 to 100,000 young people. What we do is we teach using film. Why film? Because I'm sure if I ask anyone on the call today what your favorite movie is, or what your most inspirational movie is, or what the movie that makes you laugh the most is, or what is, was the first movie you ever watched, you will remember. Because stories impact us differently as people. And we found that if we want to create a national movement towards a certain direction, connecting different South Africans through story is one of the most powerful ways to teach. Because if in a story I can connect to a hero's journey that's similar to my own or that is reflective of my own, I'm able to then connect to that character and then work through our project and the different elements we create to achieve an objective. For example, when we created the country's first national youth entrepreneurship development program nine years ago, we introduced entrepreneurship, critical thinking, problem solving, and a growth mindset through story. The film was called Step Up to a Startup. The byline was Think Big, Start Small, Act Now. On screen, where thousands of young people bust into cinemas across the country 
to watch a storyline of a young person who couldn't find work but had a skill that they could apply to solving a problem in their community. Through the process of mentorship and following our lead startup methodology, the character on screen was able to start a business. Notwithstanding, they made the mistakes that any typical young entrepreneur makes. They had to fail forward, fail quickly. They had to bump their head a number of times. They had to learn critical elements of financial literacy. But by the end of the movie, through the hero's journey of comedy, love, and drama, you'd be able to see a young person become successful. As a grade 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12 watching this and having never been exposed to entrepreneurship before, it is an innovative and groundbreaking way to galvanize the message that it is possible. Once I believe, once I believe we've got that young person, what then happens is those same thousands of young people with their teachers are taken back to their schools and we unpack the content they saw on screen through written modules, booklets, and activity workshops. Through that process, we then are able to upskill teachers as well. So we run an in-school process, which now is being adopted by the department as a part of the curriculum. So a huge, huge step moving forward is that we have been able to collaborate with the department to take entrepreneurship to schools, leveraging storytelling, supporting it with practical step-by-step -step processes, and then running what is now the National Youth Entrepreneurship Competition. Still keeping the storyline and leveraging some of the key scenes in the movie to motivate these young people, we have over the last five years had no less than 500 business entries coming into these uh, competitions. We've then resulted that in real businesses starting at school funded by the very corporates that started the journey with us. Using that methodology, we've created programming in entrepreneurship and the green economy, so focusing on ESG. We've created the country's leading metric math and science revision program, uh, where we've got over 18% improvement in our schools participating. We have also applied this to financial literacy, where we're teaching young people not just about the mind of money, but about the behavioral changes required to see long-term impact in finance and behavior. And finally, we've also done so in career guidance, where we've exposed young people to opportunities in over 100 career options. Because what we found in our schools is that if we go into them and ask young people, what do you want to become? There's usually five career streams. I want to be a doctor, a lawyer, a policeman, an accountant. Right. That's usually the ones that come up. And then, of course, my favorite. I want to be famous. What do you mean you want to be famous? I, I, I don't know. I, just, I want to be famous. I want to be a sports star, a movie star, a music star, but I want to be famous. So what we did with our career program is partner with corporate like yourselves and government, identify critical and scarce skills in different industries and introduce them early on in the development journey of young people at school. We've done this over and over till we reached a million young people and became the country's one of the country's leading social impact partners to government and the private sector. Three years ago, we then get approached by the presidency to say, Prime Stars, yourselves and the Youth Star Foundation have got this ecosystem of partners um, and we need your support in the fight against gender-based violence. Now, this by far was one of the biggest challenges that's ever been put in front of us, considering that all our programming till the stage with our m &E, with our innovative content creation, with our, even with our response through COVID. COVID was a major challenge. Our work is in gathering young people, bringing young people together, impacting them, bringing them from different backgrounds and connecting them towards one objective together with our partners who engage with us on the ground. And during the pandemic, I guess it was a blessing in disguise um, for different people, but for us, it was really about turning our five to 10 year plans into six months to one year plans, right? What, that hap what then happened, and I'll segue back into the GBV challenge, 
what we did in the COVID pandemic is we took our cinema model, right? And we, we really expanded it. And I announced a new approach titled growing from the big screen to all screens. So as a model for anyone on this call who's thinking to themselves, I think I'm, I'm, I'm liking some of this. I think there's an opportunity to collaborate, whether it be math and science, career guidance, entrepreneurship, financial literacy, leadership, or the GBV program I'm about to speak on. We then created an implementation triangle at the base of cinema, where we get township students into those spaces to engage and expose them to a new world while getting educated and back into their school system. We then created a rural model, which has been one of the most challenging elements to get into, but one of the most attractive. And there, the question was, if we cannot get a learner to a cinema, how do we take the cinema to them? And in that case, we started upskilling out of school youth. We've partnered with various organizations to do so, and we run mobile cinema education within rural communities across the country. And finally, we then launched our digital platform, Prime Stars Digital, uh, currently zero rated by Celsi, and we're looking to get different, uh, the different telcos involved to zero rate so we can get quality education to communities. So that's what we did. But back to this challenge of GBV. The first thing we did is everything we've done is academic. With all partners we've taken on, with the many communities we work in, everything we've done as a response was academic. And then we get this challenge of gender-based violence, where South Africa has got five times the femicide rate of the world, where a one in three women has been a victim in one way, shape, or form, where we've got the highest rape numbers in the world, where we've got, I mean, even the latest stats, last year, from, from, from 2021 March to 2022 April, young girls aged between 10 years old and 16 years old, there were 90 thousand reported pregnancies and that is obviously coming from the influence of elders so we find ourselves in a country um, and the south africa is defined as an unsafe country for women so the first thing we do is go into the ecosystem and we talk to the sonke gender justices the, the powers the tears uh, uh, the mentorship movements the young men movements uh, you know, and different academics to say, what is the state of the nation when it comes to GBV and what impact can we make as an organization? In these discussions, we find that there's been incredible investment in uh, supporting survivors post the fact, post the crime, and rightfully so. But as an education organization, we then thought to ourselves, where can we make the most difference? And we saw a gap in prevention. We found a gap in gender-based violence prevention. In going to the root cause of this, we then found that the majority of perpetrators are men. Yes, there are boys that have been victims to gender-based violence, but the majority of, of perpetrators are men. But no man is born an abuser. So we had to get to the root cause. And when you look at the journey from boyhood to manhood, we then figured there's something going wrong in the socialization of men and in the raising of men that is getting us to a point where we've got abusers. Then we found in our research traditional expectations of manhood. How do we raise our boys? They cannot be vulnerable. They have to be tough, have to be strong. They cannot show emotions. They cannot cry. They show power through their fists. If boys fight, we say boys will be boys. If a boy comes home and says, I was beaten up, the first thing we say to them is go back and fight. We then separate gender roles. A girl's role is in the kitchen. A girl's role is to clean. And the boy's role is, is, is to be out there and, and, and to be promiscuous and to have women. We raise our boys to stay away from dolls, but we want them to uh, work with and play with guns and knives, forgetting that dolls cry and guns kill. And that's how we socialize our boys. We then forget that as a, as a man growing up, the boy child inside of you never goes away. So we then figured out that the best place for us to make an impact in the fight against GBV is in raising a nation of good men by redefining social norms of what it means to be a good man, helping young men on their journey of boyhood to manhood and fundamentally, deliberately, and boldly challenging men of South Africa to get back into the picture, 
to go back home. What do I mean? Six out of 10 homes in South Africa do not have fathers. Where are they? But in some cases, men don't have children like myself. But in one way, shape or form, you are a role model, whether consciously or unconsciously. There's a young man out there who's looking up to you and either learning your good traits or your bad traits, but they're learning either way. So we then go out and say, we want to raise a nation of good men. And that became the birth of this program right here. What about the boys? As you can see, the logo's right on my heart because I'm very passionate about it. And I'm gonna unpack this initiative. In my journey in the youth empowerment space, this has been the most challenging, the most transformative, and probably one of the most important programs we've ever delivered. What about the boys? took us 18 months to conceptualize, engaging widely with stakeholders and fundamentally challenging the notion of what it means to be a good man versus a real man. We found ourselves in a position where we went out to the public and said, we want to get into the fight of GBV, but I tell you, more often than not, we had brands uh, rather shy away because of the challenge of gender-based violence. But our research showed us that the right place to begin whilst supporting all these other efforts is in young men. So what we then did is we began mobilizing partners. We got a GBV uh, a sector of partnerships of different stakeholders who are in the space. And then we started mobilizing what it means to be a good man. How do we change social norms of what it means to be a good man? And how do we then go to schools and start as early as at school to support young men? We then conceptualize this initiative of What About the Boys, again, leveraging the power of storytelling. And we get some of the best storytellers in the country, um, even uh, some of our previous partners like Ferguson Films, to come in and work with us on telling a story that is relatable from a socioeconomic basis, across races, across geographic locations, to speak to young men in the country. We then get to this initiative, What About the Boys? And for those who can see, you will see on the logo that it is a question mark. The question mark inside is a smaller, younger frame, which is the boy inside all of us men. And the outer frame of the question mark is the man he becomes. So if we want to impact GBV, we've got to ensure we strengthen this young man within with the right principles, mindset, support structures, safe spaces to be able to be, grow into a good man, be vulnerable, find spaces and get support. The rollout of the initiative was launched in 2022 in various formats. It started with the creation of a film. It's a one hour, 20 minute film that's going to roll out again this year for the second rollout of the project. The film is preceded by baseline assessments at school. So what we wanted to do with our learning agenda and measurement and evaluation is to get a status and a feeling of where our boys are. Some scary stats at baseline last year. 74% of the 15,000 boys that participate Twenty-four percent these are 14 to 20 year old boys 30 percent of the boys believed that they can have sex with their partner Call. Yeah, I was just actually typing a message to you to say, have we lost in Cozenati or is it just me? Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I think we've lost him. I was also just checking that. Okay, great. Well, I'll, I'll get him back on. Okay, sure. Thanks.
Are you back in Kuzanati? Sorry about that. Can you? No, hear that's me? fine. That's fine. I'm now trying to get my camera back up. You, you on on camera from our side. OK, perfect. Yeah, uh, perfect. Uh, thank you for that. Sorry about that, uh, Ms. Hap. Uh, Carl, just to confirm, the last you heard was the stats, right? Yes, that's right. OK, perfect. And just so, let me know when you want to show the video. I've got it primed. OK, fantastic. So OK, minutes, then video and question. Okay, fantastic. Um, so what we found from our stats is that we, we've got a lost generation of young men in South Africa. South Africa has been dubbed a fatherless nation. So what we decided to do was implement nationally a pilot rollout. And some of the partners you've seen behind me, um, like the Siritis, the Sassols, the Chiatas, the McDonald's, Ford, Epsa, Markham and the likes, joined us right at the beginning of the initiative, together with the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund to create this national movement for boys in the country. Most people don't know that 16th of May is International Day of the Boy Child. And it's because of the work that we focus on young girls, which must continue. I mean, ourselves, we started with Take Your Girl Child to Work Day. So we still believe in investing in young girls. But we found there's a difference or there's an imbalance now where boys are struggling. Um, they're dropping out of school. They're getting lower grades. Uh, they've got higher numbers of suicide, ADHD, non-support. Um, and we just found ourselves in a position where what about the boys through its notion of film, creating then curriculum for schools and life orientation to raise a nation of good men, then ensuring that we create an ecosystem of support with counselors, social workers, um, as well as other uh, emotional supporters for these boys in schools across the country. But what has been the biggest differentiator is our mentorship process. We challenged men in South Africa, and I will do so to the men that are on this call, to register to become mentors, to get back into the process, to be accountable for our role as role models to young boys and mentor our boys beyond the program. We've got a training and onboarding process, vetting of these mentors, giving them curriculum and guidelines and having even emotional support for them. And some of the biggest impact we have found is that our mentors also require the counseling support to get past their own challenges or as men who were raised as part of the traditional expectations of men. We've reached 15,000 boys thus far. The program has been recognized by presidency. It's been spoken about on various platforms by President Ramaphosa, and we are now in the process of, create, of uh, putting together a dialogue between our boys and presidency to ask hard-hitting questions around what we're going to do with government and the private sector to support young men. And the ultimate goal is for women and men, boys and girls, to become allies in the fight against GBV. In our post-assessment, we found some incredible shifts in mindset, attitude, and behaviors towards the right objectives. And now, what about the boys has been positioned as the country's leading contributor to pillar two of the national strategic plan on GBV around prevention and social cohesion. The last I'd like to mention that I'm quite excited about is that this brand that I'm wearing today, What About the Boys, is actually one of an exclusive drop that's just been announced by Markham. Uh, Markham is a clothing brand that's in the TFG group. And they have announced that starting in August, Women's Month, because we're turning the narrative to prevention, they will be launching nationally the What About the Boys limited clothing line. The objective of the line is to fundraise for the program so we can get more schools into the initiative. We already have 15,000 boys from last year, got another 20,000 lined up already. The program is kicking off in August. And with the line, which is a groundbreaking collaboration, we'll be able to drive the message of raising a nation of good men. And those that buy will have access to the information, but also access to our mental guides and, of course, the, the social work and counselor ecosystem. And together with Markham, we want to really raise a nation of good men and drive this message across the country. There's other partners like EOH who've supported us, SPA who's involved through their brotherhood, Love Life. Uh, Dr. Pumzi Lamunuka has joined the initiative as well. Um, and we're inviting more of you as partners to join us on this movement. I'm very grateful to Colleen 
uh, and Dombi and other supporters who've made this possible for this program to continue to grow. But this is only the beginning. We have to, if we are to stop GBV in the long term, create a national movement behind boys and girls starting at school. And we challenge you all to join us uh, and, and, and uh, uh, challenge you all to please um, get your, 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 your uh, tops, shirts, jerseys, hoodies at Markham um, and join us in our vision to raise a nation of good men. Uh, Colleen just uh, referred to a video. We would like to share a short video, which was the relaunch of the program this year, um, where we launched with 180 executives, um, beneficiary basis, the GBV sector, uh, uh, as well as government, to really continue our movement, continue our impact, and continue this work in raising a nation of good men. I'll stop here. Thank you, Colleen. And uh, I'll take any questions on the other side. Thank you very much. We are raising a nation of good men. Don't ask the question, how are you? You're going to get the answer, I'm fine. The Hudisa Sichaba Sa Banna Libashiman by Kumpile. We really focus on two pillars the relationship between fathers and sons, and the relationship between fathers and their daughters. We have a lot of children who come from a lot of um, homes that are broken and constantly on a daily basis experience some sort of level of abuse it's important for every man to join it because you were once a boy remember that remember when you were once a boy who was around you who influenced you now be the influence that you want to see in the world ladies and gentlemen the good men of south africa yeah. Yeah. what about the boys highlights the new challenges that are faced by boys today. In the contract, there is fine print. This program is a program that says everybody matters, but in particular is focusing on behavioral change for young boys and men. We actually tend to think boys can do it without the guidance when they really need the guidance because at the end, they are the perpetrators tomorrow if we don't give the direction today. Prime Stars had already started to teach the others of what impact they can do as well in their kingdoms and in their communities. I would recommend the program to every boy in South Africa. It is a very amazing program. This is a movement that should be spreading like wildfire. I was left under the impression that men have power over women because of our society which has generalized uh, the issue of gender inequality. Servant leadership is what we need in this country. We need leaders that are willing to serve around the clock. Some say leaders are born. I believe you might be born a leader, but leadership takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of endurance, and it takes a lot of um, spiritual and mental growth. Such initiatives are really a need for our society, for our boys, for our community at large. I'm here because I am very, very, very passionate about, you know, gender issues and about the raising of the boy child. Like Tama like Kandwana, which encourages relationships between fathers and sons. We are raising a nation of good men. Thank you so much, Ngozinat. That was absolutely amazing. What an amazing journey and story you've shared with us. I think one of the key things that resonates right with Voice of Change is you'll see that we have she, he, we is power. So that basically tells you that the drive to gender equality to representation in the workplace requires. And I'm bringing you. Well, can I ask that uh, everyone mutes if you're not? Thank you. Yes. Sorry.
Okay, cool. Thanks, Cole. Now, just saying it resonates so well with Voice of Change because of our messaging around it, that it is a collaborative journey, right, to achieve some of the key things that we'd like to achieve. And I think with the Voice of Change growth sessions, um, it's so good to get a different perspective, you know. Um, how do we then raise our young men to be um, better leaders in the future. You know, the stats that you shared about in future, what our generation is looking like, the type of leaders, our continent will basically be one of the youngest continents. So it's important that we drive doing that now while they're still young so we can prepare ourselves for a bright future. Thank you, thank you, Kosi. Um, so just generally, we we really do encourage an engaging session. Um, we would like people to post their comments in the chat, or if you'd like to ask a question, um, please feel free to raise your, your hand and we can go about just having a discussion with them. Tonight. I think they've done some great work. Uh, some of the key highlights on my side is that, you know, working with both private and public sector to drive representation of young people in the industry is so powerful. And what a fitting topic to close off Youth Month. So um, this, this really touched uh, my heart. Very excited for that. And, you know, the power of storytelling, we really underestimated. And I love how the organization has used that um, to drive discussions and objectives. I'll just pause there and let's check in with the audience. Um, please feel free to raise your hand for any comments or questions that you, you have for Ngozi. Lorato, somebody just posted in the um, in the chat. They said that Nkosinati was uh, breaking up when he was going through the stats. Can you please just repeat the stats? <laughs> Sure. Um, I'll, I'll repeat some of, uh, remember some of them, and I'll, I'll share with you as well, Carl, just some statistics um, you can circulate, the, the impact uh, report. Uh, but some of the key ones we were picking up is that 75% uh, of the boys who participated, it's the 14 to 20 year old boys across the country, agreed that it is okay to hit a woman uh, if she does not do what you want her to do. About 30% of the boys um, had said that they um, can have sex with their partner at any given point in time, consent or not. About 65% of the boys confirmed that they do not have a present father or a positive male role model in the home that they look up to. About half of the boys, 50% of the boys, admitted to the fact that they are dependent on uh, some sort of substances to be and feel happy. And it was about 30, 30 odd percent of the boys who had said that they role models that they look up to are either gangsters or criminals because of the material and financial things that they have and the kind of respect that they uh, you know, command in their communities. So there's various stats that we found across the program at the beginning which really gave us a baseline that informed us that we are definitely um, in a position where we need to work with our boys to help them on their journey. And we'll share some of the reports as well. Great. Thanks, Ngozi. I see there's another question here before we, we, we take the hand. Um, it says, how can schools get involved in this initiative? So we have different ways that schools get involved. It, firstly, the department shares a list of schools based on the GBV uh, stats heat map, heat map in the country. Sorry. Uh, secondly, is if an organization participates in the program, they have the ability to nominate. So any organization that joins the program, contributes funding and other support through mentors as well, can choose schools to get involved. And if it's independently through a school, they can go onto our social media pages. So Prime Stars SA, Prime Stars SA on all platforms. They can inbox us and share their interest to get involved in the program. Alternatively, the website, www.primestars.co.za. There's a big demand for the project. We currently have around 20,000 boys registered for this year waiting list of about 150,000 boys. So we're trying to close the gap, but please do uh, uh, share that information and we'll do our best to accommodate. Perfect, thank you. No, we had the hand up, but I see it's gone. Um, is the question still relevant or can I continue in the chat? 
Okay, I'll continue. Uh, there's a comment here that in the video, there was a phrase around, don't ask a question, how are you? So the question here is, what should the question be? So what question should we ask a boy in order to know how he's really feeling? Uh, that's a good point. So that comes from the, the safe spaces discussion we're having. Um, and I think the point that he was driving is that it takes time to break down the layers before uh, someone can be vulnerable with you. So usually we ask a, you know, an initial question, how are you? They give you an answer and we leave it there. But what we actually need is continuous and ongoing engagement around um, not only how are you, but where is your mindset and what support do you need? Are you in need of any kind of support? Do you have any challenges you're currently facing? How are things at home? Um, and it takes some time to get there, but I think the fundamental message I could put it together with that point that young men made is that when dealing with our young men, it is the repetition of support that gets them to a point of feeling safe. And it's only in, this, in a safe space that they will begin to verbalize where they are. We, we saw that even with, there was a stat I left out, um, about 25% of the boys who participated in the program are silently um, victims of GBV in the past. And it's only after about four, five months of constant engagement that our mentors and our social workers began reporting that a lot of our boys are victims themselves. So it's about continued support and engagement in safe spaces. That's powerful. Thank you for that. Um, okay, Cole, just before I take the next question. Yeah, so um, just I want to um, just speak before we actually close the session, because I know we're getting close to the close. So if there are any corporates on the platform that aren't part of Voices of Change, I think if we can just alert them to the fact that what we are wanting to do is, yes, this has been done in the um, in the schools and that, but what we are wanting to do is drive a corporate engagement. And so, you know, we're looking for corporates as well that would want to bring their parents with their, their young boys to a session. So if anybody's keen on that, they please to let me know because we are actually engaging with corporates on that as well, not just the schools. Great, thanks, Carl. So there's a question here um, from Ellen. I think it's great that we've started to do some work in South Africa and we're driving that narrative. Are there plans to start this in other African countries uh, based in Ghana and she'd like her son to be a part of it? Um, great question. Um, yes, we would love to get outside of the borders, uh, naturally different terrains and different spaces. The short answer is yes. We currently are not um, outside of South African borders as yet, as we only launched it last year with a pilot and now we're rolling out to more schools. But we'd be very happy to engage and discuss what is possible uh, going forward because we have had a couple of institutions, you know, express interest. So happy to engage to see what is possible because I think what is fundamentally um, what, or rather the common denominator, no matter where you are in the world, is redefining what it means to be a good man for young boys. Thanks, Nkosi. Okay, are there any other questions just before we close out? Please feel free to raise your hand and mute should you like to, to speak. Okay, I think just maybe one question on my side. Um, you know, with all of your engagements that you have, what are some of the common challenges that you've observed um, in your journey? Maybe you can just share one. And how did you go about overcoming it? With the initiative or generally? You can decide. <laughs> uh, lots of challenges out there. Um, sure, yeah, that's a challenging one. Um, I think maybe with the initiatives, but it does translate generally is that not everyone will be able to see what you see. 
um, where that is in business, in life, whether you've got objectives that, you know, aren't as clear to the person next to you, you've got to stick to your guns. Um, I think at the beginning of the talk, I mentioned Colleen's drive for one clear out message, and that really inspired us uh, and me personally to, to commit to something I believe in, even if at the time it's not widely accepted. With What About the Boys, it took us 12 months to get our first client. Uh, it usually takes us two or three to get a client. And in the beginning of this movement, working with boys was not a popular perspective until we began unpacking, connecting to the deeper within, um, helping them understand what we're trying to do with the initiative. So I think the challenge for me has been not everyone will see what you see, uh, but my encouragement was that the clearer you see your own vision, the, clear, the easier it becomes to get other people to see it. And we've seen it with What About the Boys. I love that. The clearer you see your own vision, the easier it becomes for other people to see it. Yes. Love that. Um, I see one last hand. We'll take the last question and then we'll close out. Bafana? Bafana, we can go ahead. Okay, I think Bafana is experiencing some connectivity challenges. Um, okay, Cole, happiness on your side. I'm not missing any questions. Not, not at all. Perfect. Okay, we'll go ahead and close out. Once again, we'd like to thank you so much, Nkosinati. Uh, you really shared so many gems of wisdom. It was perfect, like I'm saying, to close out Youth Month. Um, Dombi, would you like to say a few words? Gosi, I mean, there are some fantastic comments in the chat where people are saying, this is great work. My kids are nine years old. I need to be there. We need to be doing more of this. People are so inspired. They love the work you are doing. And they also didn't know about it, right? And this is what we are hoping to do on the Voices of Change movement and our partners to let them know that What About the Boys is a wonderful program that we as Voices of Change want to support, want to collaborate with, and also want to introduce to our partners as well. Because we do believe through our Voices of Change community and movement, there's great work that can take the boys further. And we can also get a lot of our mentors and coaches who are men to join and work with the boys. You know how I feel about your work. Ever since we've met, I go around looking for platforms for you to tell the story about what about the boys. Sometimes I'm sarcastic and I say, what about the boys? But you know in my heart, <laughs> I absolutely believe in this movement. And I want to say thank you for the great work you're doing. Let's continue to collaborate. And thank you for your time this morning as well. I'd also like to, Lerato, just take a moment to call out our partners and to thank them for being part of the Voices of Change movement and for all the great work that they are doing as well. So, um, Lerato, I'm going to just call them out. I'd like to say thank you to all our partners who are part of the Voices of Change movement, Accenture, NetBank, Business Engage, Kearney, Life Healthcare, Alice EG, Refinitiv, Vodacom, SAP, AECI, EOH, Pfizer, Anglo Gold, Ashanti, BMW, Aspen, Pharmacare. We thank you for joining us. We thank you for hearing our speaker and we thank you for participating and for sharing your thoughts. Lerato, I'm not sure. There's this one hand that's been there for a while. Okay, Ni, have we taken that question? Because it's still up. I don't know if it's an error, but before we close, I want to double check. Is there a question for from Okeni? I think we are good. There is no response. I think Happiness. Was... Thank you very much. And thank you for inspiring us, uh, Mr. Ngosi. And we look more, we look forward to working with you more. Back to you, Lerato. 
Thank you very much, Ndombi. You've, you've summed it up. Um, thank you very much, everyone. Once again, thank you to our Voice of Change partners. It is an exciting time. As you know, we have our growth sessions every month, so we'll have our next one coming up. Please be on the lookout for July when NetBank will be hosting us. And then, of course, we have Women's Month coming up in August, and we have our beautiful main event um, that we're looking forward to. So looking forward to seeing everyone there as well. Um, we are one minute past time, so I will not take any more of your time. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining the session, and have an amazing Friday. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. You, thank you. Thank, thank you time. for the platform. And shout out to ACI, all my best clients. Shout out to ACI. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Appreciate you. Thank you, Lorato. Thanks to Tommy. Thank you, Cheers, bye. Cheers. Cheers thank everybody. You. Okay. Tell a young boy you love them today, please. Yes, yes. What about the boys? <laughs> what about them? <laughs>